There's some risk identification techniques we'll talk about now. You want to examine the sources of the key decisions um, in the project. Look for the decision drivers. It, uh, there's different types of risk. There's technical and operational, political, legal, and regulatory, um, market and social. We, we already talked about internal and external. Really, you can group risks into these different clusters like scope and quality and schedule and cost. You may have another arrangement that you like to categorize different types of risk into, but normally you can bin out risk into several different categories or clusters. It makes it a little bit easier uh, to manage risk that way when you can group it into these, uh, these different clusters. When you're identif identifying risk, uh, we talked. We, I showed you some examples of this earlier, but you can use checklists of problems uh, from prior projects. And if, and if projects are doing the postmortems correctly, they should be documenting some of this for you. Go look at that. It's really, really useful. I actually think um, looking at what happened in other projects is a huge, huge benefit to uh, being able to assess risk for other programs built off of that or similar to that. Examine all the assumptions in the project plan and challenge some of those. Interview stakeholders. That, that's a really big one. One of my favorite techniques is interviewing key stakeholders. It could be an engineer, a technologist, it could be a business guy, a other stakeholder. I find so much useful information when you talk to some of the key stakeholders primarily on the technical side to really understand where the risk is that may not bubble up to management. I, I, that's, um, look for precedence bottlenecks, things that, you know, where, where there's dependencies and you may have risk there. Uh, what happens if you don't get that delivery on time? What does it affect downstream? Flow, use, uh, flow charting a process. Uh, sometimes um, I like to use diagrams. So flow charting a process, you might be able to identify a risk area or a bottleneck. And then finally, just brainstorming possible risks. This is where you can help to get some of the identifiable unknowns that you can at least put on the list and start tracking uh, as you build up your risk management plan.